I was in an island trip uh, last uh, weekend uh, somewhere in, in Quebec, and so I was all alone. And uh, it was really an adventure. And uh, I like adventure. And uh, of course, when, when, when you say adventure, there's, when, when you're on a trip, on an adventure trip, there's always the, the unknown. Uh, there's always the un unexpected things that could happen. Because if you know everything that will happen, it's not an adventure already. You know, there, there will be no surprises. So I was on this, uh, so I planned, I prepared. Um, I have the map of, you know, how to go to this island. Uh, it's a two-hour drive from Ottawa to Quebec. And then from there, uh, I, I have to paddle like for 30 minutes to go to that island. But the problem is when I was paddling with my kayak and my paddleboard tied up uh, behind the, the, the kayak, I got lost. <laughs> I was paddling. Uh, instead of just 30 minutes, I was paddling for close to two hours. And I couldn't find the, 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 the island. And I started paddling like around 5.20. So close to two hours, it's like seven plus. I said, if I couldn't find the, the, the island and it's gonna get dark, it's gonna be impossible for me to find the island. So I was like really praying, praying, praying a lot to God and also to Mary. Suddenly, a man showed up with a motorboat, okay? And uh, so, uh, so he, he said he noticed me circling around the island you know, with my kayak and the paddle board behind me. And of course, I was playing, um, I have this Bluetooth speaker that is waterproof, so it was playing, so he could hear it. And it's been like more, close to two hours, like I was like paddling. So he got worried. So he took the motorboat and came to me. And what happened there is that he offered to, uh, to, to, um, to, um, to drag me along to go to that island. So I'll show you a, a, a video of that. It's a short video. So that was my guardian angel <laughs> who saved me. And uh, so he tied up my kayak uh, to his motorboat and brought me to this island. So I was able to arrive in that island. So that was like a scary moment for me. Uh, another thing, on the second day, uh, another scary moment that happened to me was I was uh, in the north side of an island and uh, someone told me that there's also a campsite on the south side of the island. So I said, okay, I'll, I'll check it out. Okay, so I went on a hike and went there. It was like maybe 10 minutes or something. I went there and I saw the, 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 the campsite. Now going back, uh, so I said, oh, it's easy. Like 10 minutes, I'll, I'll be able to go back to, uh, to my campsite in the north side of the island. So I was, I was going back and I couldn't find the trail. And there was no sign. Uh, all I have is a compass with me. Okay, so I'll show you the, the compass. So all I have is the compass with me. And, uh, and so all I want to do is go, go, go to the north. But I couldn't find the trail. You know, so I tried going to the north. And instead of going to the north, from the south, I will go to the east. And I will go back to the south again. And this happened six times. And I was just getting frustrated. And uh, so it was like a, an hour and a half of hiking instead of like 10 minutes. And it started to rain. And that time around, it, that was around like six o'clock. And I said, I was like thinking, should I, or, another option is I could swim from the south side of the island going to the north. But I didn't have my life jacket with me, so I could drown, okay? And I was so afraid that it will start to get dark, and if it starts to get dark, then it will be hard for me to go back, right? And I didn't have my phone with me. So I said, it's gonna get, it started to rain also during that time, and if it gets dark, the mosquito will eat me up, you know? And, I, and honestly, fear started to, to set in my heart. He said, I could die. I could die, right? You know, I, have, I, I don't have my phone. Uh, I couldn't go back to my campsite. Uh, even if I shout, nobody would hear me. <laughs> so I could die. So there was fear in me. And, and, and the, at the back of my mind, all I'm asking is that, am I ready? Am I ready to die? You know, if I die, I know I'll come before the judgment seat of God. And I know, I don't know how I will be judged. I know I'm not ready. 
I know my sinfulness, I know my weaknesses, I know my imperfection. I know I'm not ready. You know, uh, and reading the gospel today reminds me of, of my experience there in that island because in, in, in the gospel today, it says there, again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net that was thrown into the sea and caught fish of every kind. When it was full, they, they drew it ashore, sat down, and put the good into baskets, but threw out the bad. So it will be at the end of the age. The angels will come out and separate the evil from the righteous and throw them into the furnace of fire where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Okay? So, you know, uh, all of us will, will, will come before the judgment seat of God, whether after we die or on the second coming of our Lord, we will come before Him to be judged by Him. And uh, I, I've been reading in this book in that island, uh, the book, uh, could you show the next slide, please? The, the book, this is the book that I've read, okay? Uh, it's called the, the, the Warning, and it's written by Christine Watson, okay? And I really want to encourage you to really read this book, okay? And, and uh, the, there's a bishop, uh, his name is Bishop Gavin uh, Ashenden. He said this, we are entering a period of profound change, challenge, and spiritual conflict, a struggle of life and death. I personally devoured this wonderful book, which unveils the mystery of power, of the mystery and power of God's purpose for the church today. I strongly encourage you to read it. So I, I was like reading in it and, uh, you know, talking about like the, the, the illumination of conscience, that the Lord is allowing this, you know, to, uh, to help people repent and return to Him. You know, and there will be a sign that, 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 that people will see from all over the world. Uh, you know, many people will repent, but there will still be people who will not. And so w when I was, like, reading that, you know, that, that really scared me because, of course, you know, uh, uh, I, I know I've, I, I'm not yet prepared to die. And uh, uh, also in that book, uh, I've read about the story of this priest called Father Stephen uh, Sher. Could you please show the next slide, please? Okay, Father Stephen Sher. He was ordained in uh, 1973. Okay, in 1980, uh, in, um, uh, from the Diocese of Wichita, Kansas, in the States. Now, in 1985, he got into a car accident. Okay, so this was the picture of the scene. Okay, he, he had a major brain injury there. Okay, so when he got into an, a, a car accident, what happened there is, is that he, wa he wasn't wearing his seatbelt. So when he, he crashed to a truck and there's three people there, he flew out of the car. He had a brain damage there. There was a Ma Mennonite, Mennonite uh, nun that was driving behind him. So the Mennonite nine was able to minister to him uh, while, while in, in that accident. And the Mennonite uh, nun sister was telling that while, while he was there in that accident, he, was, he kept on praying the Hail Mary. Hail Mary. He was kept on praying that. Uh, he, he, he was brought into the, to the hospital, and the doctor said, you know, there, there, was, there was no hope for him. And, and, he, and, and I think at one moment, he died. He died. And what happened there was that he, come, he came before the judgment seat of God. He didn't see Jesus, but he heard him speak. And, and this is what uh, Jesus said, okay? This is what, uh, this is what, this is what uh, D Jesus pronounced to him that he's, he's going to hell. Okay, and then he heard a female voice. And the female voice said this, Son, would you spare his life and his immortal soul? Okay, and this female voice is Mary. Okay, so Jesus said this, Mother, he has been a priest for 12 years for himself and not for me. Let him reap the punishment he deserved. This is what Mary said to, to, to Jesus. But son, if we give to him special graces and strengths, 
and come to him in ways that he's not familiar with, we can see if he bears fruit. If he does not, then your will be done. And uh, Jesus said to his mother, Mother, he is yours. After that, he came back to life. And he repented from his sins. And right now, you know, his, his mission is to tell people that hell exists. His mission also is to proclaim the, the message of the divine mercy, that the love of God outweighs his justice. Okay? So after I, I just read that story when I was into this, uh, I couldn't find my place, couldn't find uh, my, my campsite in that island, and I was so afraid to die because of, you know, pr priests could go to hell too. You know, it, it doesn't mean that we're priests, we have a free pass to heaven. No. We're, we're under the same commandments, which is to love, okay? And uh, so it was, it was, uh, it, this is a time of preparation for us. You know, we, we don't know when the end of times will be, but right now we're given this opportunity. Now is a time of mercy, okay? A time that we have this opportunity to still repent from our sins. Because after this time of mercy, it's going to be a time of justice, now, I would like to uh, recommend to you five things that we all could do to prepare ourselves. You know, uh, could you please show the next slide, please? The first one is we need to repent, okay? Repent, you know, be sorry for our sin, go to confession, but not just, you know, being, going to confession, also going to the people that we have harmed and ask for forgiveness and make amends for the harm that we have done, okay? And of course, after repenting, we need to strive to obey the will of God, which is to love God and to love neighbors. Because at the end of our life, we will be judged by love. The second thing is attend Holy Mass regularly. There's so many graces, special graces available at Mass, okay? If you just know the, 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 the grace available here at Mass, you will be here every day. Okay? Uh, the third thing is to pray and read Scripture. You know, uh, go, go deeper in your relationship with God uh, by, by, by praying, by doing um, uh, personal meditation in the morning. I really encourage you to start with 15 minutes and build it up until one hour. Okay? Uh, of course, read Scripture because Scripture is the love letter of God for us. The fourth thing is penance, penance, penance. You know, make, make sufferings, uh, make, uh, offer up our sufferings, make some sacrifices for the salvation of our soul and also for the salvation of others, okay? So we need to do that. The, the fifth thing that I would like to recommend to you is have a strong devotion to the sacred heart of Jesus and to the immaculate heart of Mary. When Jesus comes as the, the, uh, in, in the second coming, he will come as the returning king with his sacred heart. And of course, with, with, uh, with, 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 with the apparitions of Mary in all over the world, he kept, she kept on saying that my immaculate heart will triumph in the end. So have a strong devotion to the sacred heart of Jesus and to the immaculate heart of Mary. And you know, by doing this, I guarantee you, we will be able to finish strong and end well in this life.